Gia Yves, and welcome to the 21st anniversary of Garda Patrol. Yes, it's just 21 years since Garda Patrol first appeared on your screens. In fact, our first programme was broadcast on the 28th of October 1964, and it has continued to go out virtually every week since then. The original objectives of our programme were, and still are, firstly, to offer advice on how to defeat the criminal and outsmart him in his efforts, and secondly, to seek your help in bringing offenders to justice. The fact that the programme has continued for so long is an indication that it has succeeded in its purpose, and we feel that to arrive at this, our 21st anniversary programme, is a significant achievement. I think it's extremely significant. Uh, it's not often uh, in television that uh, any programme uh, is able to mark its 21st anniversary. And I think the fact that this particular programme has uh, been endured so long is a tribute, I think, not only to the Garda Shikona who have uh, participated in it, but I think it's also uh, an indication of what can be achieved when a national broadcasting organisation and the Garda cooperate together uh, in the public interest. It is a unique uh, programme, that relationship between uh, the Gardaí and RT in broadcasting terms. Certainly it was when it started, and I think uh, for many years uh, after that, and uh, on other uh, channels in the UK and elsewhere, uh, something similar is done now, but uh, I think we can claim credit for being uh, a first in this particular field. Over the past 21 years, Garda Patrol has been watched by millions of people. The figures are quite remarkable. Um, the average is about uh, 800,000. <coughs> now this is taking the uh, <coughs> showing on RTE 1 and RTE 2. But the interesting thing also is that it isn't all adults. There's a substantial number of young people uh, in that audience as well. And uh, in present times, I think that's particularly significant. The Director General of RTE, Mr. Vincent Finn. Crime concerns us all, and over the years we have tried to keep you informed of the latest and ever-changing crime trends, as well as keeping you up to date on developments in crime prevention methods. As the criminals' tactics change, so must our ways of thwarting them. Public support is vital to the successful operation of Angarda Shiakana, and we would like to take the opportunity of this milestone in Garda Patrol to thank most sincerely everyone who responded down through the years to our request for help in solving crime. Sometimes the information supplied may not have been exactly what we were looking for, but very often it was, and the fact that you responded and kept responding to our requests has been most gratifying to us. Please keep it up. Just as television has changed from the black and white days of 1964, so too has the crime situation. We've seen a big increase in violent crimes, many involving the use of firearms. We've seen a big increase in attacks on people's homes, even the homes of that most vulnerable section of our society, the elderly. Back in 1964, this type of crime was not so common. But we are encouraged to see a much greater community awareness of the crime situation today. This is reflected in the interest shown in urban areas in the neighbourhood watch scheme and in rural places in community alert. We're happy to assist in any way we can in setting up these schemes where they can help reduce crime. Compared with many other countries, ours is still a relatively peaceful place, where the quality of life is good. It's our intention, with your help, to keep it that way, and even to improve on what we have. Those of you who remember the first Garda Patrol programmes recognise these pictures of our first presenters who brought the programme to you. Seamus McPhillips, Vincent Smith, Edward Russell, and Terry Brady. Today, 21 years later, Terry Brady presents another Garda Patrol. Terry. Thank you, Tommy. Seems like only yesterday. Our first crime, like so many others recently, is an armed robbery at, at Dublin Bank. Here are the details. It happened at the Bank of Ireland branch in Fairview last Tuesday morning at about half past ten. Three men, each armed and wearing balaclavas, entered the bank and shot one of the staff in the leg before making off with a sum of money. This is the car they used, a grey Toyota Celica bearing the false registration number GZS263. It had been stolen from Monaster Boys County Louth last Sunday evening. They drove off in the direction of Fairview Avenue, but not for long. They abandoned it here at Inverness Road. Here the raiders climbed over a wall into the grounds of St. Vincent's Hospital. They were all in their early 20s, between 5 feet 8 and 5 feet 11 inches in height, and slim. One of them carried a yellow rucksack-type bag. 
We would like to know whether Toyota Celica was between the time it was stolen at Monaster Boyce on Sunday night and when it was used in the bank raid on Tuesday morning. The car's true number is UZ Y83. If you were in the Fairview area on Tuesday morning, you might have seen the raiders arrive at the bank, or maybe you recall some suspicious activity near the bank long before the robbery. If so, the Garda at Tantar would like to hear from you. Their telephone number is 336182. That's 336182. Still on the north side of Dublin, an assault on a young woman at Sutton. It happened this day last week. She was waiting at this bus stop at Dublin Road, Sutton, near the junction with Baldoy Road, when two men dragged her over this wall. As they attacked her, a passing motorist stopped, and the two men ran towards a car parked on the footpath and facing towards the city. As the assailants drove away, the motorist followed. Both of the attackers were about 20 years of age and about 5 feet 10 in height. One of them had dark curly hair cut short with pimples or pock marks on his cheeks. He wore faded denim jacket and jeans with badges on the front of the jacket and writing on the back, including the words, The Who. His accomplice had blonde hair brushed back and down to his collar. He wore similar clothing. If the motorist who followed the attackers is watching this program, we appeal to him to contact Hothgar Thee. Their telephone number is 322806. That's 322806. And they'd also like to hear from anyone else who passed by the scene of the attack. The time again about a quarter to eight on this night last week. Now to something more pleasant. Monday next is the October bank holiday, and while there will be many different sporting events on that day, one in particular stands out as a major annual event, the Radio 2 Dublin City Marathon. So for anyone planning to move around the city that day, here's some practical advice. The marathon is a huge event. Six and a half thousand people have entered for the race this year, and they will virtually take over the streets of Dublin for several hours. Add to that the spectators who will line the 26-mile route, the stewards, helpers and first aid personnel, and it all means an awful lot of people in Dublin that day. Even though you may have no interest in the marathon, if you're living in Dublin or intend visiting it next Monday, we advise you to take note of the route. It's not the same one as in previous years. The race will start and finish in the St. Stephen's Green, Harcourt Street area. The runner will set off along the south circular road to Kilmainham, and the route will bring them to Drimna, Temple Oag, Harrell's Cross, along the Grand Canal to Irish Town, across the East Link Toll Bridge to Clontarp, Rahini, Donny Carney, Fairview, and across Butt Bridge to the finish in St. Stephen's Green. We appeal to those of you who live along the race route not to park your car on the road outside your home. Remember, the race starts at 10.45 a.m., but the runners could take several hours to pass along your way. Roads in the start and finish area will be closed to traffic all day from 9 o'clock in the morning. That's the Hatch Street, Harcourt Street and St. Stephen's Green area. There will even be traffic diversions in this area from half past 11 on Sunday night. There will be no parking from midnight on Sunday in that area. If you find this a little confusing, Radio 2 will be broadcasting traffic information at regular intervals on the day itself. We will also provide an information service on next Monday for anyone wishing to make traffic inquiries. So if you live near the race route or intend visiting the city or are unsure of the arrangements and the route you should take, you can phone us at 01 if you live outside the Dublin area, 7811122. That's 7811122. If you live in the Rahini, Dollymount, Clontarf and Fairview areas, you will find you are within the race route between the hours of noon and 4.30. So if you have an important engagement, we advise you to make your arrangements outside of these hours. Those intending to compete, those intending to compete in the marathon are advised not to leave any valuables in their cars. Another big sporting event next Monday will be the race meeting at Leperstown. So here's some information that may help. If you are travelling from the north of the city to Leopardstown, our advice is to keep well west of the city and travel via Blanchardstown, Clonsilla, Lucan and Clondalkin. If you are coming from the Nace Road, don't come any closer to the city than Newlands Cross. Turn right there onto Belgard Road and travel to Leopardstown by Talla and Rathfarnham. The best advice we can give to motors is to travel early and avoid the inevitable traffic jams. 
Whatever you plan to do on Bank Holiday Monday, we want you to enjoy yourself. Well, that's all for us for the first 21 years and for another week until next Thursday, Ihoa at the Slawn. Thank you.